And uh, good morning here out in the West Coast and whatever time zone you are in. Um, welcome to the last day of uh, hashtag Art Project 2020. Uh, this is uh, our first, hopefully, of many of these expos, but um, I can't wait to hear where this all goes. Um, so I'm Natalia Lebedinskaya, I'm the program director here at the Vancouver Biennale, and uh, I really wanna thank Jessica Angel for putting this event on with us and for curating these amazing series of talks and presentations and conversations. Um, and of course, to the entire team at the Vancouver Biennale for doing this in the smoothest silk way that continues to amaze us all here. So it's a big shout out to everyone who's making this possible right now. Um, as with the previous days, I want to kick this off with a brief land acknowledgement, as is the customary thing to do uh, out here in Canada, and I think it's generally a good habit. Um, so we are gathered here today on the territories of many nations across Canada, Turtle Island, and beyond. Um, here, the Biennale team is on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil people. And uh, I think today, especially with the lineup of the talks that we have, it really brings into focus the need for diversity of voices and for um, undoing the damage of colonial systems and undoing the damage of the patriarchal systems. That, of course, all of that is intricately connected. And I hope everyone tunes in into the, oh, well, the first and the last talk, starting off with women uh, in the arts and blockchain movement. And our last talk today is by um, four labs out of Emily Carr University with um, a number of indigenous artists who are really diving into the possibilities of XR. So without for the further ado, um, kicking out the conversation uh, between these three powerhouse women leading the art and blockchain movement. So over to you, Kate. <laughs> Hello, thank you. thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, Vancouver Biennale, and thank you, Art Project Jessica Angel, who has brought us together and allowed this opportunity to speak today. Um, I would like to briefly introduce you our agenda today. Um, we 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 in the Harry Station here with uh, with myself. Uh, my name is Kate. Uh, from Kate West Gallery, we, uh, which curates and exhibits art in both traditional and tokenized art spaces. We have Sarah Zucker, is a visual artist and writer. We have Angie Taylor, uh, is a VR artist, sculptor, animator, and creative technologist. Um, they will have an opportunity and they prepare the beautiful slides that they can talk about their practices themselves and um, give a little bit more information um, about their art. And today in the conversation, uh, we um, uh, we have prepared a couple of questions um, each brings uh, to the group and we can discuss various topics in relation to gender diversity, artistic identity and anything else if we have any other additional questions uh, from, the, from the space. I would like to um, open up with the slides if uh, we can get some assistance here that maybe uh, Sarah can start first to introduce yourself. Oh, sorry. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Let's start with Sarah. <laughs> All right. Hi. Uh, my name is Sarah Zucker. I'm a writer and artist uh, based in Los Angeles, California. You can see here my some of my lovely um, self-expression. Um, you know, my work is very much interdisciplinary. Um, I really, in the past five years, I've leaned into mixing cutting edge and obsolete technologies, specifically specializing in the um, embrace and, and flagrant use of, of VHS, um, which does seem a little uh, nutty <laughs> in 2020. And I think that's why I like it. Um, it's very important to me that my work exists sort of in its own dimension and I, I you know, purposefully intervene uh, with, you know, the same tools we all use. You know, I, I am also someone who's using Creative Suite and, and 3D and all these things. But um, I guess why I like the use of obsolete technology so much is that it, it's a, it's a very um, purposeful aesthetic intervention that takes you out of time and gives us sort of this um, different look at where we are right now. Um, 
I think that's I think that that pretty much sums it up. I, I could I could talk at length, but I'll, I'll let the work speak for itself. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Sarah. We don't have so much time, so yeah. we can refer maybe to your work, which we have yes. uh, tokenized here on Ephemera. Uh, yes, this is my piece, Three Graces, uh, created this year in my studio. Um, this is a single edition NFT that was minted for our show, a celebration of the woman. Uh, this piece has a lot of deep meaning for me. Check me out on Scent. I just wrote a, a piece about it. If you want to know more about where it comes from, I thought it would be a really good fit for this show as you know, the Three Graces are obviously uh, a trope from antiquity from the ancient Greeks who, for as much as I admire them, they sort of, uh, you know, were the original <laughs> misogynists in many ways. Um, so I, I wanted to have fun with, um, as I often do, with taking something we can all recognize that sort of from the uh, from the height of patriarchy and, and repurpose it and reappropriate it in my own way. Perfect, thank you so much. Angie? Um, maybe we can move to your slide and, and uh, hear more about you. Yeah, um, my name's Angie Taylor. I originally studied sculpture and drawing back in the 1980s and uh, did wood carving and steel construction at the time, um, then became a prop maker and got into digital media arts through um, dropping off props at the BBC one day and seeing people using the first version of Photoshop and I completely fell for it and since then um, I became an illustrator and a motion graphic designer also was an Adobe demo artist during the 90s touring with Adobe at trade shows and conferences and then um, I had a knee operation gave all of that up and uh, started tr doing training for people and um, then when Covid hit I decided I've always wanted to get back into doing my art because I kind of got sidetracked into design. Always was trained as a fine artist, so I wanted to get back into it. So now I'm, um, I got an artist residency at a place called Fusebox in Brighton, and that started me off on the path of VR and XR. So now I'm making VR projects, digital sculptures and paintings and animation. And um, my work kind of, I, was really into the punk scene back in the 1970s and 80s. I'm quite old. <laughs> um, so my work's still very heavily influenced by that, and it just juxtaposes a kind of DIY punk ethic with the fresh immediacy of naive art, which is an art style that I really love. Um, but also intermingled with the complexity of 3D digital technology. Um, and I explore challenges in my work of... Um, Neurodiversity, I have Asperger's and ADHD, so that's a big part of who I am. And uh, also my work often champions the misfits in society and gives them power and a voice to, to enable them to speak through my work, I think. That's what I attempt to do anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Very interesting. Well, I know that we have quite a limited time today um, and I wish we have more, you know, to talk about uh, your uh, practice. Um, but there are certain angles which I wanted to touch today about the diversity and diversity in art and tech uh, market. So I would raise the first question. Um, do you feel that the crypto art environment is more inclusive comparison in comparison to traditional art world? I would raise it to both of you, of course. I would say, unfortunately, not at the moment. I think um, I think what concerns me is I see the crypto art world kind of mimicking the established art world a little bit, whereas I was hoping it would kind of start to go in a new direction because of the technology and what that enables. Um, I, I mean, I think people are slightly more aware of diversity issues, but it doesn't really seem to have made much difference in terms of the market. But don't you see more crypto artists on the, um, you know, presented uh, on various platforms? I think in comparison to traditional art platforms, you know, or like traditional art uh, auction platforms like RZ or Artnet, you know, we have um, we have seen quite many female artists, uh, which was quite positive to me. Um, and also many, many talented uh, women 
who uh, came into space and were considered as diamonds, you know, like uh, nobody were aware of them. And crypto space uh, allowed us, you know, to to kind of meet new people. Um, so you would still see that there's the situation is not really best. It's it's not as it should be, considering women are fifty percent of the population, and women are, in my opinion, equally talented as men. Um, I think it should be fifty fifty, <laughs> and it's not. So until it's fifty fifty. I think there's still work to do. Okay, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, I think Angie's absolutely right. You know, if, we're, if we look at where we are right now, um, I think we can all agree that there, or maybe we can't, but I, I think I, I, I agree at least with Angie that I perceive that there are many ways in which the crypto art space is at the moment mirroring the traditional art world, you know, in, in terms of gender diversity. However, I also think it's it's a complex problem. You know, it's not um, it's not something we can completely simplify. And I think there's a certain degree of um, you know uh, self selection too. Um, and this is something I, I I've been thinking about a lot uh, because um, you know I for a long time was a professional script reader, and we saw this issue with a script reading service I read for that they you know in in an open platform it was like 70% of everything was submitted by men. And they did a lot of research into this and uh, they found that, you know, in, in the case of this open platform, which we could say crypto art is also an open platform. Everyone is, is welcome to, to be involved, um, that they found it actually is related to the Dunning-Kruger effect, which if you're not familiar, the Dunning-Kruger effect is the psychological effect where um, people who are of, uh, limited ability tend to be overconfident and the more more ability you have especially if you're in the middle range you know if you're not like mozart if you're in the middle range of ability you become more and more realistic about where you are with your abilities and they found in this script reading service that um the dunning kruger effect actually has a gendered component which is that women are much 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 more honest with themselves about their ability Whereas men, because of social reasons, because of how men are socialized, they are socialized to fake it till they make it, you know, to be overconfident and then eventually hope that they'll catch up. I mean, we can see that maybe perhaps in uh, American politics of the moment, you know, this, this unearned confidence. And um, I, I only offer that up because it's, as we've prepared for this panel, something I have been chewing on a lot that it's something that is not native to crypto art itself. It's native to society as a whole, that we are not socializing women the same way we are socializing men. Um, and, and that's, I think, part of this issue of why we literally just aren't seeing as many women involved, especially because of the crypto component. Women are not socialized uh, to be as concerned with finance and investing. And th these are, these are, fields that men are pushed into and women are discouraged from going into. So it's really, I think, as much to do with the crypto part of it as it is to do with the art part, and which is also to say technology as a whole, you know, it's a technological endeavor. And we still in society tend to discourage women from entering technological fields. Um, so I offer that up only because it's, it's what I've really been chewing on of this is this is a multi-pronged approach you know you it's not as simple as saying yes we're seeing a lack of diversity and it's the fault of the patriarchy it is but what we call the patriarchy also includes women we ourselves are part yeah. of it you know um absolutely i mean you only have to look at how people bring up their children differently to see mm -hmm. why it happens it's not it's not the fault of any gender or any group of people it's how we all are. And I think as women, we're as guilty of it as anyone else. But, you know, if you if you look at how kids are brought up, boys are taught to not cry and get on with it and not feel sorry for themselves and be brave and all of that. Whereas women are kind of usually, I mean, this is a huge generalization, but generally women are taught to look after each other and look after people and be more empathetic and and not worry about themselves so much. So I think that has a long lasting impact. And even if you look at, if you're driving a car and you've got kids in the back and they need to go to the toilet, 
you'll drive as far as you can to get to a bathroom for the girl to go to the toilet. Mm. But if you've got a boy, you'll let him just go out and pee on the side of the road. And even just that example really mm -hmm. changes how the boy and the girl will behave in later life. I absolutely agree. So would you think it, it's more kind of, you know, in our culture is more a conspiracy of strength against weakness? Because men also struggle. I mean, actually, the victim in this culture can be anyone. It can be man, it can be female or male, um, both. And um, women um, are allowed, let's say, to be unhappy and defeated because physically we are weaker, you know. Um, but men, they are, they are, they are struggling, you know. So more kind of intelligent, gentle, or sensitive men can be just as victimized as women as well, you know. But we, in our culture, we don't allow them to, to defeat themselves, you know. For them, the defeat is even more um, maybe painful, you know. Um, so it's maybe more a conspiracy of, of strength against weakness, you know, rather than against women, you know. Yeah, but I think it is a gender imbalance. So it is to do with gender. It's not it's not like every in brackets strong person has a better life than in brackets every weak person. That's not the case. It's um you can definitely see the pattern in terms of gender though. And it de depends on what you define as being strong and weak. You know, I don't define women as being weaker than men, for example. Um, I just see men and women equally having strengths and weaknesses, you know. But it is a patriarchy. Like, men are the kind of dominant group in society. White men are. Right. And I, we could have a, I mean, my God, we could spend like a week talking about just this. And to, to speak to what you're saying, Kate, I think it's also important, like, you know, to acknowledge, at least I personally, I'm not a gender essentialist. You know, when I speak of women, if you identify as a woman, you are a woman. I pers I'm non-binary. I'm a woman and I'm non-binary. So there's the whole, even when we start talking about these notions of gender, those are those are particularities and granularities that again we could dedicate a whole conference to. So I know it's easy for us <laughs> to get off topic from crypto art itself because I guess that's when you bring these things up, they are inherently activating. They're inherently questions that we go, this affects so many of the many different compartments of my life that I could write, you know, I could write 10 novels about this this con this concept alone of of gender and gender policing and self gender policing and how it affects our livelihood how it affects how we um, express ourselves and how we you know finance our lives and how we value our own work definitely there are many many issues but you know to come back to our topic of of crypto space you know does crypto space give equal opportunities or do you think something is still missing I think there are equal opportunities, but it's a, it's also to do with confidence. And um, what I noticed a lot was the women in the space weren't talking with confidence. They weren't promoting their own work. Um, and it's not about policing that. It's more about just encouraging. I don't have any problem with men at all. All I have a problem with is seeing women not represented or not having the confidence to promote themselves as much as I think they should. So when I did the She Art exhibition, all I wanted to do was just give them a leg up and say, look, you're really great. Get out there and talk about it. And actually when they do, they start to kind of compete more on an even keel. And a lot of them sold work that they hadn't sold for a long time before. So it's, it's more about encouraging the women than dissing the men. I have got no problem with men at all, but I just think to redress the balance, we need to kind of work more on getting more women involved, getting more people of colour involved, and giving them a little bit of extra help to even out the playing field. That's all I'm interested in. Absolutely. Angie, yeah, I, I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more, Angie, and I think that's why the work you're doing, the work women of crypto art are doing, I think that's why it's so essential. And I, you know, I've seen I've seen debate around this. Whenever inevitably one of us, one of the 
uh, women uh, artists brings it up just just like a helpful little not even like a criticism just a, when people notice oh you know if you look at the top 20 earners on super rare they are predominantly male and people always go oh but hackatow hackatow one of them is a woman and we all kind of have the same response of that's great for them. You can't you can't point to an outlier and and use that as your counter argument for a trend. And, and also notice they've got an ambiguous name. They're not obviously right. a woman. Right. Yeah. And uh, to make it brief, I, I think what you're saying is 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 exactly the way forward. And to answer your earlier question, Kate, what is exciting about crypto art is compared to the traditional art world is that we have the potential to make it whatever we want to be it is completely open for our definition right now, which is why I think some people, some of us, all of us are able to get disheartened sometimes when you go, oh man, we're just doing that shitty thing, aren't we? Like we're just totally perpetrating this exact same thing where we, we acknowledge, we reward, we celebrate men when they are confident, when they say, this is my, what my work is worth. And in so many subconscious ways, all of us discourage women from doing that. If you have the audacity to be a confident woman on the internet, I mean, God love you. Like I, I know how that, you are putting yourself out there for people to just take shots at you. Not that the men, again, I love men too. Not that they don't get shots taken at mm -hmm. them, but for them, it fires them up. And I find um, with women, it's like when you get piled on, when people start coming for you, how dare you say your work is worth that much? That's why we so need the support of other women. We need the support of men who see what we are doing and who go, hey, no, she's great. This stuff she's doing is great. And she's allowed to have an opinion, for God's sake, you know? Um, and that's a, I, that's a great point because there yeah. are so many men who are really supportive of mm -hmm. all of this. In uh, fact, most, most of the men in the space are, which is fantastic. Yeah, and absolutely. But that, that's another good point is that when we tried to get women involved in Shi'ar, a lot of them said no because they were scared. They didn't yeah. want to get involved in case they got trolled or mm -hmm. they didn't want to come out as being female. This is, a very, this is a very interesting point, Angie, because uh, this is something I wanted to review as well as why we are only three of us today. Um, you know, if you if you look at other panels, there are line um, <laughs> standing people wanting to be on a panel about this topic and that topic, you know, and everybody is, um, you know, not afraid to speak about their subjects, you know, but once I, I, I wanted to host a panel uh, about gender diversity and about, you know, with female uh, crypto artists and I reached out to quite many of them. Um, ninety percent were feeling not very comfortable of speaking first of all in public and secondly revealing their identity, even though they identify themselves as a women, and um, also being scared to be attacked in this toxic social media environment, and that led um, led led me to think that actually you know women supporting women project, which is non commercial to support uh, also traditional um, female artists, not only crypto female artists or generative female artists, any any medium, you know, just to empower them to not to be afraid. Um, so I think, you know, we here, we, we, we have the similar <laughs> goals, uh, not to say that women are better than men, but to just, you know, to give them this strength and empowerment uh in order to speak up and be confident in what they're doing and i really hope that everything what you know we try to initiate uh is going to to help at least some of them um we have a we have a we have a question from the audience and we already four four minutes over time so <laughs> maybe we should answer yeah so maybe we should answer the audience question uh, let me see here. Um, question from, I'm wondering if we can talk about why so many women choose to be anonymous on the crypto space. Are we still hunted by the history game, 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 game gate? Well, I think we partially answered that one. Um, if you want to comment on the last on the last point, are we still hunted by the history uh, game gate? I, th I think so, because I think a lot of the collectors come from that that world of mm. gamers 
And you can see that in the type of art that's being bought at the moment, a lot of 3D, a lot of what I call demo art almost. It's like what you see in 3D demos is being bought as art, um, which is absolutely fine, but it kind of indicates the mindset of the people that are buying. And I think because they're coming from a gaming background, they're, the aesthetic they're looking for is very gaming related. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. So. We yeah. have another one. I think Sarah maybe can answer the last question from uh, from audience. Um, I guess one way we can put this is um, if the imbalance didn't exist, we would not have this panel. <laughs> In another words, is there a man leading the art and tech movement panel? <laughs> oh boy! Um, we will organize you know, one for you. <laughs> these, you know. It's funny. So this this question sort of ties to what I leading it. <laughs> right. What I said about inevitably when someone and I've seen I've seen women artists raise this. I've also seen plenty of male artists raise this on Twitter where they just point out, wow, there's a huge gender imbalance when you look at it when you just look at sales numbers. You know, I know super rare and all the platforms I know I've spoken to them they're doing their best to try to have an equal number, you know, to have gender parity on their platforms. But they are, you cannot tell people how to spend their money. You cannot, collectors collect what they want to collect. And I, I am a firmly meritocratic person. I, I, I also collect, I collect what excites me. Um, you know, we didn't get into this whole question, but again, it could be its own panel. The question around how much does the artist's identity uh, impact the value of their work? And I, and that, relates to what's happening here. This question of, I certainly would never advocate that one's work should be collected simply because one is a woman or that collectors should somehow be forced to collect work that they don't want because they have, no one is saying that. No one is saying that. When these discussions get raised around gender parity and around furthering uh, you know, women artists, furthering people of color, furthering people of, of trans or non-binary experience or, or just, you know, a, of atypical experience, a marginal experience, no one is saying to you that, hey, you, as person who is top of the pecking order, we're gonna cut, we're taking your thing away and we're gonna, it is false logic, what is happening here. This, this notion of men leading art and tech, we don't need that panel, you guys are already <laughs> leading art and tech. All the panels are already about you. So. The other good point about that, Sarah, sorry, is sometimes <laughs> men think mistake rights for privilege. So they think their rights are being taken away mm -hmm. when actually it's mm -hmm. just privilege. Sorry. And we're opening privilege up to everyone. No one, yeah. is, no one is taking your privilege away, except for maybe the part that says you, just by virtue of who you are, get to be up above other people who are of different lived life experience. And and I and look, if I put myself in their shoes, if you are someone who already feels you have a tenuous grasp on your privilege, again, this is what we've seen in American politics. It's what those of us, many of us are trying to wrap our heads around. You have to put yourself in that person's shoes. You can't view them with vitriol. So I love you, person who wrote this question. I I I I understand <laughs> you you possibly were maybe just trying to troll us. Um, but in doing so, you are actually offering us yeah, chef's kiss, the, the perfect example of why we are having this panel and why we all clearly are in agreement. No one has mm. a problem with men here. No one has a problem with you all expressing yourselves freely. In fact, I, I wish for the world, I wish for all men to feel they could express themselves as freely as they can. Like Angie said, we discourage men from expressing emotions and sensitivity and empathy we would be so much better if all men felt they could express sensitivity and empathy. Um, you know, again, I could keep going on and on, but it's to say that, that us having this panel is in service of, like Angie said, there are so many women out there who are in this space, but feel very tentative. Mm -hmm. Any of us who have lived this life and had to be a human woman of whatever variety on this earth, knows that any endeavor we do, we have the task of doing the endeavor. Okay, so we make our art, that's the endeavor. And now I have this whole additional fucking task mm -hmm. of now I have yeah. to make my art as a woman and I'm uh, gonna be having all of this extra fucking work. 
start I don't, I don't want just... I don't want to do these panels I don't want to have to do right. panels about women I don't want to have to have Waka or she art no. exhibitions because it opens me up to more shit mm -hmm. I've had more shit from doing this than anything else I've ever done so as and soon as it becomes 50 50 <laughs> we won't right. have to do any of this we'll anymore all hands in sync That's all we want. Go. As soon as it's 50 50, it. <laughs> no more women's panels, no more Waka, no more she art. No, That's all we want 50 50. Girls, I want to say something very important. You know, probably it will uh, smooth things uh, a little bit. Um, one of the reasons why I also initiated and, and initiate and will initiate, I'm not going to stop, you know, these talks and the exhibitions and everything, it doesn't matter how much shit, sorry, you know, we can receive from that. I'm not afraid. Um, I just wonder um, that in one of the reasons also what I noticed is in this world and in the culture, there are many other women who actually bring additional com competition, not only men. It's not only men who can be an obstacle, it's also your friend, woman, who can be an mm. obstacle, you know? And many times, you know, there are other females, you know, who can damage a lot and 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 be, um, can hurt with the word, with a comment that, you know, can kind of close you up with, uh, with the potential and your confidence and et cetera, et cetera. And this competition comes actually not even from male, word but from also other female so you know it's 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 a very a complex subject we are uh, we've been allowed to have 10 minutes more uh but i don't know if we can allow brian i don't know let's ask if we can have another one to two minutes just to comment on this that other women also uh, raise a lot of competition uh not only men and that's why um, my message here would be also to a, to a women uh, to not to compete, but to unite in order to um, deliver better results, because we can learn from men one thing. They unite much, much better. You know, they support each other better. You know, they, they, the male friendship is something that books have written about. And what about female friendship and about female supporting one another? You know, this, this is something that we women also have to reflect on ourselves probably and learn from, from men. Don't you think? Yeah. Actually, actually Walker has really blown all of that out of the water because I've never seen such a fantastic camaraderie amongst a group of women. There are two or three who are a bit kind of bitchy and sort of maybe competitive, but on the whole, nearly everyone has been supportive of each other, helping each other. Um, you know, if anyone's going through anything, getting trolled or an, an, having any sort of negative experience, they've got a safe place to come and talk about it. And in terms of getting things done as well, it's incredible, like people have ideas and then it just gets done. There's no arguments or there's, there's very few arguments in terms of, you know, who's doing what really. So I've, I've had quite a good experience within Waka, but I do know what you mean. And I have experienced that from women as well where there's a kind of competitiveness or you feel that um, you should, I always feel like sometimes with some women that they don't want me to be confident. They want me to be quiet. <laughs> so there's a kind of feeling of um, almost like, you know, you shouldn't be showing off or you shouldn't be promoting yourself. You feel intimidated, of... right? Sorry? You feel in intimidated a little bit. A little bit, yeah, I do sometimes. Yeah. There is a good point from the audience. Um, I, if you can read, it's uh, to Angie, actually, to your comment about the gaming-like behavior. Um, do you see the comments in our private chat, Angie? Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe you can... I can't see that. the question. Well, it's more about good point, Angie, to your comment about the um, um, gaming-like behavior and there need to be more vocal female collectors to balance out the taste issue as well. Yeah. I agree with that. Collectors also collect what others are collecting and they collect the artists at the top of the leaderboard. So women need to be more visible. <laughs> well, I agree with, with this state sentence, probably, you know, um, Sarah, do you want to add up something? 
Sure. I mean, to speak to what we were speaking about, you know, that it's what I said earlier, that we all we all live in patriarchy. Women are part of patriarchy, too. And just to speak to the competitive thing that, you know, if you are in any of these groups that feels disempowered, it's it's very easy. It's a very common psychological response to feel like, well, only there can only be one, you know, especially if you start. It's why, Kate, why you said so few uh, female artists or women artists are hesitant to identify themselves as women artists because it's like, oh, no, I'm I'm putting myself in this box and it's way more competitive. And I'm, you know, um, but it, it's ultimately just sort of a, a false way of thinking. Again, it's then you are you are you are building a cage around yourself when you think that way. And when you think that the other other women are your competition, that it's really like, um, you know, that we really should. There, there's a there's a, a, a anecdote about like lobsters that if you put male lobsters in a pot, they'll like build a chain and they'll, they'll escape the boiling water. But female lobsters in a pot, they they sense that, oh, no, the end is near and they hold each other down. So they all die. Uh, you know, and whether or not that's actually scientifically true, I do not know, but I've heard that offered up as a metaphor for what we're talking about here, this feeling of, well, if I'm screwed, you're all screwed with me. And we really, that's that's on us. That's on us to come up over that way of thinking. Um, to speak to this question that came in through the platform about collectors, this is something we right now crypto art is experiencing such a huge surge in interest such a huge surge in the prices being paid for work and angie you touched on this of like the type of work we're seeing selling repeatedly for um you know for these high amounts of being just a very certain style across the board we are only going to see this space take off the way we all want it to is if we get a greater diversity of collectors. We need a greater diversity of collectors with a greater diversity of taste, with a greater diversity of of, identi of their own identity. So yes, I, I think that part of this is, at, it's, it is actually simple that we do not have female collectors who are spending the amounts that these whales are spending. I, I personally can't, no one comes to mind for me that I would consider a whale who is who identifies openly as as female? Um, some of them may be, some of them are anonymous, so we we don't know. Um, but I think that that's that's a greater question for all of us. It affects all of us in this space. I've seen artists of every walk of life have that same sort of gripe of like, my work doesn't fit that model of what is currently really hot, and I know my work is great, and why isn't it achieving those prices? And I would say to them, whether they're a woman, whether they're a man, whatever, you know, however they, they view themselves, that it's as simple as don't let the fact that this limited amount of collectors who are defining the space right now discourage you from the potential that we have in the future moving forward. And it's on all of us, you know, I, I catch myself sometimes, I don't want to sound like I'm shilling a pyramid scheme <laughs> or something when I'm telling people the crypto art. But it's really on all of us to just, in the ways that we can, expand this space. We all rise together here, you know, all of us. And it's on us to encourage more, a diverse group of people to enter this space as collectors and as artists. Um, and that's the only way we're ever gonna sort of break out of this, this uh, maybe bit of moment of redundancy that we're in. Yeah. Uh the other thing is, instead of, sort of wanting people to fit this system that we've built. Maybe we need to change the system to fit the people. So in order to redress the balance, maybe we need to look at the existing system and think, well, it favors competitive mm -hmm. people. It favors people who feel really competitive and love that adrenaline rush of being competitive. And most men are programmed to be that. Whereas I hate competition. I. I I don't thrive in competition. I like to feel calm and have a calm environment around me when I'm creative. And the current system doesn't really reward that. It rewards this competitive kind of, it is a competitive system. So maybe we need to look at dad art and other, you know, other systems that are being looked at in which to kind of push crypto art towards.
Perfect. With this positive message, I would like to, I have to wrap things up, um, but we can, uh, we've been suggested to continue our conversation on Attendify after the talk. So everyone um, who has a still a question, they can raise it directly to you, Sarah, or to you, Angie, to myself. And I would like to thank you very much for this um, very interesting conversation. And we have many, many other things to still discuss. And I hope we can continue in an hour next talk once we are invited, <laughs> once we unite. Thank you, girls. Thank, thank you, you so much.